everybody welcome back to the channel what's going on hope you're very well hope you're doing all good i am surprisingly okay um which is suspicious anyway so i was like hour six into my little sims 4 depression playing eight hours a day for three weeks and never play again for four months situation last night and i was watching a video regarding maya's like murder and like the timeline of like her death and i was like hold on no because hold on for me maya's death was probably one of the most disappointing things on the show but i feel like her overall death was very like underwhelming almost i think maya was a very important character in pretty little liars not just for who she was but also the impact she had on other characters in the show like emily for example and i think she was very crucial to emily's character development and emily kind of discovering herself and really coming to terms with like who she is as a person so i feel like maya's overall character was actually very important for the show when i was researching this and going through it i realized the amount of connections really that she had to alison de Laurentiis. but i feel like maya's death was very underwhelming because it had nothing to do with the overall story and i feel like for a character of her magnitude like for example i really hate tv shows that are like too scared to kill off like big characters in a big way i think a good example of this i've mentioned before is stranger things like i never feel like main characters are at risk and i find that really really annoying and I don't think Maya is a main character, but I feel like it's along the same path of like, they're a bit scared to like link it in that way. Do you know what I mean? But actually when you look at it, Maya's involvement with the people that she was involved with actually hold a lot of importance into the story. And I just feel like her death was very underwhelming because we obviously found out that the person who killed Maya was Lyndon, Nate, whatever his real name was. And it actually had nothing to do with A or Alison or anything like that. And it was just kind of like an obsessive boyfriend gone crazy. And I feel like it really doled down therefore the impact that Maya's death actually had on the show because when the reveal happened and when we when we discovered they found the body i really truly felt this was kind of one of the first and very few times i felt like things were like at stake here because we're obviously led to believe that um a has killed maya i really really like that concept and i feel like it really added like oh like this is like like a is like this is a serious thing here but i feel like the conclusion of it just really dulled down what the overall death did to the show and i think the overall meaning of the death on the show especially because when we found out they discovered her body it's literally a direct parallel to how they found allison's body and i remember when i was watching it at the time I was like that's gonna have to hold some significance here because obviously Alison De Laurentiis is the entire show she is pretty little liars so for her death kind of to be like directly parallel like that that needs to hold some importance and I feel like the writers were trying to do that but no offense here I don't care about Lyndon James <laughs> I don't care about what Maya did to him. I don't care about that entire situation, to be honest, because it has no relevance to the story. And it was just kind of a side plot. And I'm kind of wondering now, was it just the writers wanting to involve Emily a bit more? Because Emily's storylines were very underwhelming. I feel like we could have done a bit more with Emily. I feel like once we found out that Maya's death had nothing to do with A or Alison, the consequence of maya's death was like nothing we just moved on because it was like well it had nothing to do the story why should i care about it but i think maya is a very important character on the show and i really like the build-up to it I, I said this in my melissa um video the the writers always did such a good job at setting things up like i really felt mystery and tension surrounding multiple things on the plot uh, multiple things on the show sorry the nat club maya's death the hastings family there's bethany 
like there's so many things they do so good like the build up to a conclusion is so good like i love it and i think that's why a lot of the plot lines when the conclusion comes along it feels very underwhelming because like you've done all this build up you've done all this really good the tensions there it's very dry i'm feeling it do you know what i mean and then the conclusion is very like this is boring <laughs> like and i feel like that's exactly what happened with maya's death like i didn't feel like oh this is a game changer for the show and i feel like with someone who was paralleled to allison it should be important for the show so i've decided to rewrite maya's death from maybe what i would have done or kind of like a different route that we could have gone down maybe not follow it to a t but just kind of like my idea surrounding maya's death and how we could just improve the entire situation so that it just is way more impactful for the show it just like i feel like once maya's death was revealed to be not anything to do with the story it was like okay let's move on like Maya's story is really important not just for the show but for, for characters on the show and she's actually involved in quite a lot of the key people surrounding the show so let's involve her story more let's make things so much more at stake if A had killed Maya or someone important in the story had killed Maya like the stakes that it would have shown to us as an audience like things are like serious like we're not messing around here do you know what i mean so i would have tied maya's death much more with allison and a and kind of before allison had come back and what allison was doing in that time because i think it just links everything back to the show and i think it makes so much more sense but i think it also helps to explain a lot of things behind the scenes which i will get to but it, it just adds more to people's motives but also the reasoning to a lot of things that i think some of us kind of question here and there but like i think maya's importance is very parallel to allison in the terms of like she's my she's emily's first girlfriend she helps emily come out and realize that it's okay to come out and to be gay and i think allison was trying to be that when allison was like still like alive and you know before the disappearance so i think that is really key to be honest i always felt like maya and allison were quite not connected but there were so many similarities and things that like like kept them linked i feel like having maya's death in connection with allison would have just like enhanced the darkness that Alison had brought to Rosewood and something that she could never kind of escape. So uh, this is the night that I would do or kind of like surrounding the night that Maya went missing. So I would still stick to kind of the plot where she wants to run away. Um, she wants Emily to come with her, but Emily doesn't want to go with her. So she ends up running away. And we know that Noel was helping Maya and um maya was like staying in his cabin for a while and obviously during this time she made those videos to emily and you know on that secret website that they end up discovering and she stays there for a bit however who was noel helping at this time alison de laurentis right so we get told that noel helped allison when allison was missing he knew that allison was alive honestly who didn't know that allison was alive i feel like they should have told me like i could have been on it because like everybody else knew so i think maya's catalyst for her death was kind of being in the wrong place at the wrong time because i think one time noel would have been out of the cabin and it was just maya there but along comes Alison asking for more of Noel's help. And this is when Maya discovers that Alison is actually alive. And she's like, whoa, what's going on? Like, I've literally moved into your house. Like, you're dead. Like, what's going on? That's another thing that connects them as well. Maya obviously moved into Alison's house. Um, that connection there, I feel like, is very important. And doesn't really get spoken about. Like, they're literally, like, the same people. But, like, the different characters do you know what i mean like she's literally the new girl in the dead girl's house like i feel like that is so important 
Anyway, Alison explains to Maya kind of the entire situation and kind of begs her not to say anything. Um, but then Maya starts using this as blackmail towards Noel and Alison for a while because obviously she's running away. She needs a place to stay and she needs money. So she uses this against Noel and Alison to kind of get her comfort or kind of like a safety net while she's like on the run. However, with tensions brewing, I think one night in this cabin, they're all together and they're having a bit of an argument because Alison doesn't like to be blackmailed. She is the mean girl of Rosewood. She likes to be in control and she doesn't like to be blackmailed. So she tells Maya that this situation is going to stop and they're not being blackmailed again and it needs to stop. End of. She takes her money that she has and she goes. Noel's also in the room at this point and Maya is like, no. Like, I think Alison and Maya are very both stubborn people. Like, they like to have the last word. I think Maya is very mischievous and I think Maya would want to be like, no, this will be ending on my terms. We're going to carry on and I'm going to tell everyone about you being alive and the lies that you've told if you don't keep this up. And I feel like tensions would be brewing, right? There would be a lot of shouting, a lot of conflicting, a lot of fighting. And I think Alison would order Noel to kill Maya. And Noel is like, what are you doing? Uh, sorry. No, 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 no. I'm not having, no, 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 not, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. But Alison would blackmail Noel and be like, I will go to the police and I will say that you kidnapped me and you did all of this. Listen to what I'm saying. You need to kill Maya to get this problem out of the way. So Noel is like, oh, that is not. Oh, that's not. In the sense that, no. you know what I mean? Like, And he ends up killing Maya. And I think I would set this up as like, not as like Alison leaves the room, Noel closes the door. We don't actually see what happens. We just hear kind of like a scruffle and like maybe a scream. And like, that's like it, right? So that's like, that's like the death, okay? Who heard this entire, entire conversation, right? Who is very sneaky, suspicious, the first two seasons of the show? Mona. Mona. Mm, Mona. Why have I said that Mona kind of, I guess, witnessed or like heard what was going on? Because this is when I would involve the, the whole Maya new situation the Maya new situation when I tell you it lives rent free in my head I think about it every day I'm like sorry no it's too much it consumes my brain it's too much for me the Maya new was one of the best setups the show could have produced but it came to nothing which was the most annoying thing Miss Aria you're a killer not Ezra's wife Maya new okay yeah, yeah. There was no writer's strike today. They were in the writer's room and they were writing. They were they were being paid that day. They were they were making money that day. Do you know what I mean? The Maya new stuff, guys, I promise you, I'm obsessed with it. I love it. And I always try and tie it into my my own theory. Guys, I love it. Like, what do you mean? No, no, no. Because like I'm obsessed. Like, absolutely. So this is where I would tie that in. Because then it would make sense, oh, Mona's saying that because Mona knew that Maya knew that Alison's alive. Interesting. Interesting. Guys, do you see how I'm connecting things? The, to the, I'm going to write a letter here to the Pretty Little Liars writers now. I love you guys because you gave me the show that I've been watching for 10 years of my life. I've grown up with the show. Do you know what I mean? Let's not play around. And, you know, I understand writer's strike, but it's not, it's not on, is it? So get back in there. Let's rewrite this. Because me and you, we could have a good thing. Because I've got ideas, you've got ideas. And we might not take all of your ideas, and that's fine. But we will take my ideas. Um, <laughs> my idea here is let's not leave any stone unturned. And let's connect the dots. Now, Maya knew you guys were onto something. You guys were absolutely onto something. And I promise you, you will be paid. You'll be paid double, triple, quadruple. I don't, I don't know what five is. Five top pool. I don't know what five is. You will be paid. Crazy script writing in a good way, in a good way. And I love it. And, you know, you're onto something. And we will get back in the writer's room and we will work on it. 
and we will come to a good conclusion because I think this should be it. Yours sincerely. Wish you all the best. Um, the end. Obviously, this helps to connect Mona and Alison because, like I said, they have a lot of connections. Maya moved into her house, which also I don't actually think makes sense because Mrs. De Laurentiis later on is like, oh, I didn't even touch Alison's room. But then M Maya moved in. Anyway, um, so they obviously had Emily in common. The way they found the bodies was like the same like structure, the same like parallel scene. Then the aftermath of this death um, would be kind of simple, but Noel and um, Alison take the body to Alison's like backyard. I think, is this Maya's backyard at this point? Because Maya moved into her house, I'm guessing so. And buried her in the same place where Alison was buried. Because Alison, I think Alison would be very like sick at this point. Like up here. In terms of like, she watched her mum bury her there. And she's now going to bury someone else there. And I feel like it would bring a lot of trauma back to Alison. But she would ultimately force Noel to do this. And then I feel like this would therefore give Alison and Noel the weight to kind of blackmail each other in terms of like Noel would still have to help Alison during her like being away, but also Noel would have it on Alison as well. I've always said Noel is a character that kind of frustrates me because like he's always involved in the big storylines for no reason, but I feel like this would give him more of like motives for stuff. And like, for example, he has to help Alison now because she has that over him. That's the motive. He has to do that. Because for so long, I was like, why Why would he help Alison like that? And like, why would he like, like, what? Do you know what I mean? So I feel like this would get like, he's forced to help her. But also it gives him motive for the dollhouse. Now, the dollhouse is something else that he was involved in. And I still, to this day, don't understand why other than apart from money. But, like, he was rich anyway, so I don't really know why. But this would give him more motive. I feel like Cece would have told him and, like, lied to him and be like, yeah, we're going to torture Alison as well. I feel like Noel would want to get back at Alison for everything that's happened and everything that she's made him do. So I feel like he would be on board because of that, not knowing that the Alison that they're torturing would actually be Mona. I feel like this would also, there was a letter written the night that Maya died from Maya to Emily saying that there was something important that she had to tell her and she had to see her that night. And I feel like this would be that Alison is actually alive. And I think Maya was prepared to tell Emily that Alison was alive. I think she already made her mind up. I think maya would have been the type of person to she would have received the blackmail money from alison and noel but would carry on nonetheless to try and like rinse them of everything they had but then would still confess the truth anyway so i feel like maya would 100 percent have told emily that alison was alive that night but obviously like she was killed before she could as well as this because maya moved into her house maybe maya had found like diaries or just more secrets of allison that she was quite like keeping a hold of and blackmailing allison for i feel like there has to be so much more importance of maya moving into allison's house than like we're just like led on to believe because i feel i feel like it's a big thing like, she's literally moved into Alison's house. I feel like that is a huge, huge thing that doesn't really get spoken about that much. Um, but I think it's... I like it, the direct parallels and how much she's connected to Alison. Also, Noel gave Alison a ticket to Europe, maybe to kind of get her out of the picture and to keep her quiet and to send her somewhere where she couldn't kind of tell the truth about everything that had happened. The reveal. I think the reveal of the murder would have been just before Mona was killed, like the day before Mona was killed. I feel like Alison would take Emily to Noel's cabin to kind of explain where she was like this whole time and like what she was doing in this period of time. But I feel like when they were, when they're in this cabin, Ma uh, Emily finds a few of Maya's things and she's like, hmm, this is like suspicious. Like what is going on here? And then she sees blood surrounding Maya's things. Um, not a lot of blood, like just like a drop of blood or something like that. Alison is kind of forced to confess to Emily 
about what happened to Maya. And obviously Maya was very important to Emily. So Emily would obviously really take this to heart, obviously. And she would be very distressed by it. So I feel like she would run out of the cabin. Alison would chase after her. But she drives away and leaves Alison there. And this is when, like, Emily kind of loses the plot a bit. But why have I mentioned Mona's death? Because during, like, sections of Mona's, like, death, like, kind of, like, the trial, like, surrounding it, Emily wanted to frame Alison for her murder. And they were going to, like, plant hair and things like that in the crime scene. So I feel like now that the Maya case was, like, closed and they thought they had the killer... Also, that's another thing. I think I would still do the Lyndon James story, but I wouldn't actually make him the killer. I would just make him someone that's, like, crazy obsessed with Maya and wants to be involved with, like, every person in Maya's life and kind of, like, went crazy. But I would do that they assume that, obviously, Lyndon killed um, Maya, but it was actually Alison. So the case is closed. Emily can't do anything about it. She doesn't have any proof apart from Alison's words surrounding it. So I feel like um, along with Emily framing her for Mona's murder, she would also... She would want Alison to be arrested for Mona's murder to also have her serve time for Maya's murder at the same time. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like she wouldn't tell the girls just yet. It would get revealed at another time. But the reason, like, she would frame Mona is because she wants Alison to go to jail for Maya's murder. But, like, I feel like this holds so much more consequences for the show because this literally, like, Alison and Emily cannot be friends anymore. They cannot speak to each other. And I feel like the group would not take Alison back in. And I think the overall consequence this has for the show is so much more bigger and therefore enhancing what Maya's death does to the show. I think it's so important. I think her death is so important to the show. And I feel like it would get to the point. Alison knows that she's about to be arrested for Maya's murder slash Mona's murder. They don't know about her doing Maya's murder, but she knows that Emily's framing her for it. To the point where Alison would have to leave Rosewood and escape forever. And like that would be the end of Alison on the show. Like she comes back, we hear her story, things get revealed. She's about to be arrested. She has to leave. And that's when her story would end. And they, thank God, they would not have time to do the redemption arc or ruin her character. And the last, like, things we get from Alison is that she's always been this evil person. And it's something that she can't leave behind. And she can't just come back to Rosewood like nothing ever happened. Her actions have consequences. And I think her being in Rosewood is not something that she could do. So she runs away. And that's the memory we have of Alison, the evil villain that she is. And I love it like that. I, I love Alison as a villain. I think she's so cool as a villain. And then obviously the story gets passed on to Spencer and that kind of part of the show. Um, because I, I really think that once Alison comes back, I think Rosewood has outgrown her. I think she's outgrown Rosewood. I don't really think there's any place for Alison after she comes back without her being a villain because I hate the redemption arc. I think the redemption arc was ridiculous. Sorry, no offense. But I feel like it would be like that. And then therefore, this holds so much more weight on Maya's death and what it means to the story, but also to the show, to Alison, to more major characters. The impact of her death is so huge. That is it for this video that is how i would personally have rewritten her death because i think it just i i think it adds so much more to the show i would have loved for maya's death to just hold a bit more consequences for the future of the show and not to be so concluded in like a bad way but make sure to like and subscribe and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys <laughs>